In today's video, I am showing off how to get custom instance data into a multi-mesh and how to use a Texture Atlas 2D in Ditto. Both of these are set up in C++, and this is through the Project Genova extension, which allows C++ scripting within the engine. And to show both of these off, my example here is this voxel engine I have been working on and developing. So the multi-meshes are these individual chunks, as you can see here, and they are all rendered with one mesh. However, I am able to pass with my texture 2D array and the custom instance data, I'm able to get a different block at each spot. All right, to explain how this works, I'm first in my chunk.cpp file, which creates all the faces for the multi-mesh. So there's a lot of stuff here. However, we don't need to go through it all. The main ones is that we get a reference to the multi-mesh using find node and finding the child multi-mesh instance 3D and getting the multi-mesh from that. And then I set multi, set use custom data. And at the end, we set the instance count based on how many times we've created a face. And here's all the code that actually detects whether we should draw a face, as we'll only draw a face if the block facing outward is transparent, meaning we could actually see it. However, the important part for this video is this create plane. So we've already determined that we're going to create a face. Now we actually create the plane. So the first thing we do is create this transform, which is just a basic vector three, which has an X, Y, and Z. But the main one is we do this multi set instance custom data. So we pass an I, which is the spot in the instance. So like what instance number it is. And then we set a color. And the first one is block to texture, which is this function I have. And basically all this does is makes it so that like the top of a grass block is solid green, the sides are partial and the bottom's the dirt texture. But we basically pass in one value in the X, which is what texture we want to use. And then the second value is the direction. And then after that, we set an instance transform, which is this, and we increment I. So each time we call this, it will add one more so that you each instance has its own unique spot in the in the multi mesh. So then in our code, we can go to chunk. And in our multi mesh, we have the mesh we actually want to spawn in, which we use a plane, a one by one plane, and we created this custom material. And in this material, it was based on a uh, it's a shader now, but it was based on a material. So if we go to the parameters, we have this texture albedo, which is a texture 2D array. And the way we create that is we go down here and I have a texture atlas of every texture I use. And in import, normally it will look like a texture 2, but you have to go in here and switch it to texture 2D array. And then whatever you want for these values is fine, but the ones that are important is the vertical and horizontal slices. So if we open mine, it is, you can see now it's just one grass block, but the full texture is 16 by 16 and each cube is 1 16th of the whole atlas. So we do this to convert it to a texture 2D array. And then once we do that, we pass it into our shader. And in our shader, this is where these two values come in. So in our shader, we create the sampler 2D for texture albedo is now a sampler 2D array. So this makes the texture 2D array. And if we go down, this is less important for this video, but we get that instance custom X and we set it to block and then varying float block is how you do ins and outs in Godot. So we set block equal to instance custom X and this will determine the texture. And then the instance direction, this one is more important for the video, or at least it explains the concept of multi-meshing instance custom data. So that's that Y value we passed in. So just the direction and we get that direction from instance custom dot Y and instance custom is this color that we have. So this is the X, this is the Y, this would be the Z and that's how you reference it. And for this, what we do is based on which of instance direction we had, it just rotates the face. So instance zero does nothing. It just moves it up and all the other ones wrap it around the cube. And now in our fragment, we use the original, the first one I got the block, 
And this is where we have our base UV, which is just a VEC2, but if we wanted to do a VEC3, this is where it would become more important if you are specifically doing a texture 2D atlas, you will need this and a texture 2D array. So the sampler UV is becomes a VEC3 and we take the UV and then we take the block as the third value. So the third value is what number in the texture 2D array do you want? So like what's the index? And then inside of our albedo texture, we can simply grab the texture of the texture atlas and use this VEC3 to get the value. And with all that combined, when we run the program, you can see everything loads up. And even though these are all rendered by one multi-mesh, we are able to get custom blocks based on the steps before. And if you don't do the texture 2D array and you just pass in the atlas as a normal texture and you crop it manually in the shader, you will get this weird bug where as you fly away, you can notice that the resolution gets smaller and smaller on blocks further away. And this is the MIP map. However, if it's all part of one texture, the textures will start to blend together. So in my case, since most of my textures aren't filled in, it started to turn purple. And if you enjoyed this video, but you're still curious on how to actually set up a multi-mesh by itself, you should click on this video where I explain how to do that using Godot and C++. And until next time, see ya.